Hi there, I'm Samuel from Simply Learn and let me help you understand about AWS EC2, a compute service in the cloud through this video. Somewhere far in the country, a scientist has a lab far in the woods and at one day he stumbled on a calculation that he had trouble solving and he was very certain that his computer can handle it and he asked his computer to do the math or the calculation for him and the computer thought about it for a while then took a couple of hours in trying to process the data and eventually at one point it gave up and died due to low memory and this old scientist is now clueless about how he was going to finish the task and complete his invention and let the whole world know about it and that's when he was introduced to this new friend AWS as you see on the screen AWS was very handy in replacing his old machines and it was able to give him the service that that he wanted at that moment. AWS has been around for a while helping people with their computer needs and now this new scientist friend in need is welcomed by the new and trendy ID technology AWS and sure enough his new AWS friend welcomed and walked him through the new way of computing. And this new happy faced AWS friend talked to this scientist about AWS EC2 in specific and walked him through about all the new innovations in IT and in cloud that he had been missing all these days. So his new friend AWS started the conversation about explaining how there is no need for any hardware units, no managing hardware or provisioning in AWS. And secondly, it explained increasing and decreasing the capacity as per the demand is just a click away. And the best part here is that there is no upfront commitment and we only pay for what we have used just like we pay electricity and water bills. And all this comes with complete control from our side. In other words, the whole key for this infrastructure is with us. And as if this was not enough, all this comes with enterprise grade security that's beyond imagination in on-premises. And if this tool does not excite you, then this definitely would. You can work from anywhere in the world. Now this really made the scientist to get excited especially when he thought about working from home. Working from home, there is nothing like it, isn't it? Now this person, this scientist is not tied up to a particular environment. He can work from home, work on the fly, work from anywhere. Still the data and everything else in his IT environment is secure and safe. Now let's move to the next level of discussion. Let's talk about what is EC2 and some of the use cases of EC2. And this use case we're going to talk about or this architecture we're going to talk about, it notifies a group of users about a new letter. And the components or resources this architecture would need be first EC2 instance, then SNS, a simple notification service, and uh, coupling EC2 and S3 service together. That's all it would require to get an an architecture that notifies a group of users about a new newsletter. And now I think it would be a good time to talk about what EC2 is. AWS offers plenty of services offered under different domains like you know, compute, storage, database, migration, network, management tools, media services, security, business productivity, application integration, machine learning, game development and a lot more coming up out of which EC2 falls under the compute capacity. So what is EC2? EC2 is a web service which aims to make life easier for developers for providing secure and resizable compute capacity in the cloud. With EC2, it is very easy to scale up or scale down our infrastructure based on the demand. And not only that, this EC2 service can be integrated well with almost all the services in Amazon. And out of all this, the best part could be we only pay for what we use. All right, let's talk about this use case. A use case here is that a successful business owner has a bunch of users and a successful product that's running and now he has developed a few more products that he thinks will be very successful that he thinks his customers are gonna like now how can he advertise his product to his new and prospective customers or the solution for this question can be addressed by AWS in AWS we can use services like simple notification service SNS and EC2 for compute and S3 for storage, we can in a way integrate them all and achieve this business use case. 
and that sort of got this business owner very cheered up and now he wants to use the service and he wants to get benefited from the service he wants to advertise or he wants to notify his users every time the company creates a newsletter all right, so let's talk about what it would take uh, to get this environment up and running or what it would take to connect the environment and put the applications on top of it. Firstly, we would require an AWS account and then for compute capacity, we would require an EC2 instance and here's how we go about doing it. The first thing is to create an AMI, which is Amazon Mission Image. That's really the softwares and the application packages we would need to run our application. And the second is to choose the hardware. In here, it's the instance type. Depending on the workload, we would be choosing the hardware. And depending on the intents of the workload, we will be choosing the size of the hardware. And finally, we would uh, configure the instances. You know, how many instances do I want? You know, which subnet do I want them in? And what's gonna be the uh, you know, stop or terminate behavior of the instance and do I want to update any patches when the instance starts running all those pieces of information go in here when we configure the instance and then the first three steps is really about the OS volume and the basic hardware now it's time to add additional storage to the EC2 instance that would be step four here we add additional storage to the EC2 instance and then tags we use tags or we would configure tags to easily identify an EC2 instance at a later point you know we give it some meaningful names so we can identify like you know which team it belongs to which billing department it belongs to what's the purpose behind launching this instance stuff like that in an environment where we run 700 to 800 or even more instances identifying an instance and trying to understand uh, you know who owns the resource for what purpose we created it could be an full-time work so tagging comes to a rescue at that time after tagging as step six we would configure the firewall which is also called security group for the ec2 instance and this is where we would allow or deny connection from external world to this particular ec2 instance well it works both ways from outside and from inside out this firewall blocks the connection based on port number and ip address and finally as step seven we review all the configurations that you have done and we make sure that the configurations is what we wanted and finally click on submit that's going to launch an ec2 instance all right this was just an overview of how to create an ec2 instance now let's talk about each and every step in detail so to begin with let's talk about how to create an ami well the ami is just a template a template that's used to create a new instance or an, a new computer or a new VM or a new machine based on the user requirement. The things that go into an AMI are the software, the operating system, the additional applications that get installed in it, stuff like that. The AMI will also contain software information you know, information about uh, operating system, information about access permission, information about uh, volumes, they all compact in the AMI. Again, the AMI is of two types. One is predefined AMIs or called Amazon provided AMIs. The other one would be custom AMIs, the AMIs that we create. And if you're looking at a particular AMI that you don't want to create but still uh, want to get it from Amazon there is a place or a portal called AMI marketplace there we get like thousands of AMIs in there available for us to shop and use them on a pay-as-you-go business model and use them as pay-as-you-go billing so there you can search AMI that you're looking for most probably you'll be able to get it there now let's talk about choosing the instance type the instance type is basically the hardware specification that's required for a machine that we're trying to build and the instant types is categorized into five main families they are to begin with it's compute optimized now compute optimized gives us lots of compute power or lots of processing power so if my application is going to require a lot of processing power I should be picking compute optimized instance and the second one is memory optimized now this is very good for application that require 
in-memory caching. You know, there are some applications that performs well with cache or through cache, or the application would create a lot of data that it wants to keep in cache for rereading or for processing, you know, for lengthy processing, stuff like that. For those type of application, this memory optimized instance that comes with in-memory cache is a very good use case. And the third one is the instance that comes with the GPU, otherwise called GPU optimized. GPU stands for graphical process unit, and this is very good for application that deals with gaming. This is very good for application that's gonna require large graphical requirements. And storage optimized is the fourth option, just like the name says. This is a very good use case for storage servers. And the fifth family type is general purpose, just like the name says. It's for general purpose. If you're not particular about the family, then you generally would end up picking the general purpose because here the services are sort of equally balanced. You know, you'll find a balance between the virtual CPU and the memory and the storage and the network performance. It's sort of balanced. All the components, all the features that needs to go in a computer are sort of balanced in general purpose. Now these instant types are fixed and they cannot be altered because it's hardware based. We buy hardware we do not have much control on the hardware that's being used well we have options but we do not have control on the hardware and these instant types are divided into five main families they are computer optimized memory optimized GPU enabled storage optimized and general purpose then as third thing we have to configure the instance now here is where I have a lot of options about uh, uh, purchasing you know what type of purchasing do I want to do do I want to go for a spot instance do I want to go for a reserved instance do I want to go for an on-demand instance these are different billing options available and that's available under configure instance not only that here is where I'm going to put the EC2 instance do I want an public IP address assigned to it do I want an IAM role attached to it IAM role is authentic or what kind of authentication am I going to provide and uh, the shutdown behavior the shutdown behaviors include do I want to stop the instance when the user shuts down the machine from the desktop or do I want to simply terminate the ins instance when the user shuts down the instance from the desktop so those things go in here just like the name says configure instance a lot of instance configuration options comes in here that's the third step and not only that under the advanced details or advanced tab under configure instance I can bootstrap the instance with some scripts now bootstrap is nothing but the scripts that you want to be run in the instance before it actually comes online let's say you're provisioning the instance for somebody else you know instead of you launching the instance and then logging in and running some commands and then handing it over to the other person you can create bootstrap shell scripts and uh, you know paste it in a console option available under configure instance and Amazon is going to take those commands, run it on the instance before it hands over to the user that initially requested for that instance. Now, it could be a different user or just you. It sort of automates, you know, software installation procedures in the instance that we will be launching. And not only that, there are multiple payment options available under configure instance. The user can pick an instance under normal price and that instance would apply normal rates applied to it and there are also options like reserved instance where the user can pay for an instance upfront before a year or before months you know for a span of year or a span of months and that way they can pay less per hour for using that instance not only that you can also go for spot instance like bidding for those instances whoever bids more they get the instance for that particular time well these instances are a lot cheaper than on-demand instances and through bidding and buying you can keep the instance as long as your bid price doesn't exceed the price that Amazon is proposing and as the fourth step we will have to add storage to the instance that we are about to launch and here we have a bunch of storage options I can go for a permanent storage uh, which is free or I can go for an external elastic block storage also called EBS which is paid and it's a permanent storage or else I can integrate my EC2 instance with S3 for its storage needs and the best part about storage is uh, free subscription users 
they get to use 30 gigabit of SSD storage or magnetic storage for the whole year. In this page where we are ready to add storage, we will have to mention or provide the size in gigabit and the volume type. Is it going to be a uh, provisioned volume? Is it going to be a uh, general purpose volume? Is it going to be a magnetic volume? Stuff like that. They are volume types and uh, we also need to give inputs about where the disk will be mounted and where whether this volume needs to be encrypted or not. So all these options or all these inputs are received from us under the adding storage section. And then the fifth option would be adding tags. Like we discussed some time back, tags are very helpful to identify a machine in an environment where we have 700 or 1000 VMs running. And security groups are the actual firewall that sits in front of EC2 instance and it protects that EC2 instance from unintended inbound and outbound traffic. Now here is where I can fine tune the access to my EC2 instance based on port numbers and based on IP address from which it can be accessed. And finally, we get to review the whole changes or the whole configurations that we have made to find out whether they are intact with the requirement and then click on submit that's going to launch an EC2 instance. But hold on, we're not done yet. When we're about to launch or before the Amazon console actually launches the EC2 instance, it's going to give us an option to create a key pair. Remember, I said it's key pair. You know, key pair is two things. One is public and private. The private key is downloaded by the user and is kept with the user. And the public key is used by Amazon to confirm the identity of the user. So just go ahead and download the private key and keep it for yourself. And this private key gets downloaded as an .pem file. It's a format of the file and it gets downloaded as .pem file. And our next step is to access the EC2 instance. And because the instance that we have launched in this example, let's assume it's a Linux instance, and that's going to require a tool called PuTTY to be able to access it. And this PuTTY tool is really needed when we are trying to access a Linux instance from Windows instance. Most of the time, Windows instance will have PuTTY installed in them, but in some rare cases, they do not come with PuTTY. In those cases, we can go ahead and download PuTTY and PuTTY generator, and we can start using it to access the Linux instance. Now you might ask, well, I understand PuTTY, what's PuTTY generator? Now the file that we have downloaded is in .pem format, but unfortunately PuTTY does not accept .pem format as input. You know, it has to be converted into a different format called PPK. And PuTTY gen is a tool that helps us to convert the .pem file into PPK file. So uh, the quick way to do it is uh, download generator, open it up, click on conversion and insert the .pem key that we have downloaded and save the private key. And this, when we save the private key, it gets saved as a .ppk type private key. And when that's done, the next very step is to open PuTTY and try to log in. And the way to log in is to open PuTTY, put that IP address here and then click on auth you know, this is where we would input the file that we have created. So click on auth and then click on browse and find the .ppk file that we have converted and stored, browse it and upload it and then click on open. Now that's going to open up a login screen for us. And uh, the AMIs comes with a default username. Depending on the AMI that we have picked, the uh, username might differ. In our case, we have picked an AMI for which the username is ec2-user and this is the default by the way. Let's put the username ec2-user and hit enter and that's going to open up the Linux instance using CLI. There are a few other things that we can do with the terminal that we'll explain it a little later. All right, so we have successfully launched an EC2 instance and uh, yeah, give yourself a pat on your back. Launching an instance was just one part of the solution. So let's actually talk about how we can notify our customers. SNS or Simple Notification Service is a service or a product in Amazon that helps us to notify customers through email. So uh, navigate to SNS in your account and create a topic. And we're gonna use this topic for public notification. So let's make it public and then add subscribers to it. Now these subscribers, these subscribers are the people who you want 
to be notified about the newsletter so we already have the email database in there add them to the subscribers list and then they will start getting new newsletters as and when we post them to the topic and as next step create a bucket in s3 where you can store content and in that bucket create an event that triggers a notification to simple notification service so this is how it will be set up a notification will be sent to our subscribers anytime we put something in our s3 bucket so s3 bucket is going to create an event for the notification and the notification is going to make sure that it's delivered to your end customer because they're already subscribed to the topic as subscribers and finally let's connect the s3 with EC2 so the bucket and the AWS instance are in sync so we put some content in the S3 bucket our email system notifies our customers and the customers can go online to a website that's hosted in EC2 and because S3 and EC2 are in sync the items that we put in S3 will also show up in EC2 see how this is all connected and it's working together and once this is all connected our subscribers will regularly be informed anytime we put new content in the S3 bucket and the same content will be made available in EC2 instance through the website. So what did we learn? We learned about how EC2 can replace the hardware system for computing and we can go virtual where we don't have to manage anything and also the environment is scalable in a couple of uh, button clicks and it also provides pay as we go type of subscription and not only that we have full control of the environment and it's highly secure at the same time and then we learned about what EC2 is what EC2 can do and how well it integrates with other services in Amazon. We also looked at in detail about how to provision an EC2 instance, a step-by-step -step approach. And finally, we talked about a use case. Finally, we talked about a use case where a business owner wants to notify his users about the new product that he is developing and anytime that's available he wanted an email to go out to the customer notifying about the new product and the customers can come online and check it on the EC2 instance that he was running. All right, I believe that was a good amount of explanation about what EC2 is and how it gets connected, how to provision, and how to go about building an architecture like we saw. I believe you enjoyed the session. I'll meet you in another session. Thank you. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.